Hey everyone, Will here. So for today's video, we are going to be analyzing the story behind the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. That means we're going to be going over all aspects of this historic monument, including the origins of this monument, the purpose of this monument, and the legacy of this monument. So without further ado, let's begin. So the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is a historic monument in the Arlington National Cemetery that is dedicated to honoring deceased U.S. service members, whose remains when unidentified. The monument is guarded 24 hours every day by elite members of the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment, which is also known as the Old Guard. The on-duty sentinel guarding the tomb does not wear any rank insignia, which guarantees that the on-duty guard is junior in rank to all of the honored service members. So the story behind the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier begins at the end of World War I. As a result of the First World War, the United States had lost over 100,000 young service members, many of whom were unidentified and buried in mass cemeteries in France, near the battlefields where they had died. France and Great Britain, similarly, had a large number of unidentified, deceased service members who had died during the course of World War I. In France, a tomb was placed at the Arc de Triomphe in order to honor the unidentified, deceased French soldiers of World War I. Likewise, a tomb was placed in Westminster Abbey for the purpose of honoring unidentified, deceased British soldiers who had died in the conflict. In the United States, Brigadier General William D. Connor advocated for the construction of a similar memorial to honor fallen and unidentified U.S. soldiers. On December 21st of 1920, U.S. Congressman Hamilton Fish Jr. of New York introduced a resolution calling for the body of an unidentified American soldier who was killed in combat in France to be buried in a special tomb at the Arlington National Cemetery. On March 4th of 1921, the United States Congress approved of this resolution, moving forward with the construction of the tomb. In March of 1921, the U.S. already had many deceased American soldiers whose identities were being processed. U.S. officials wanted to ensure that the body of the soldier buried in the tomb would not be identified, in order to fully honor the purpose of the tomb, which was to honor unidentified and deceased U.S. soldiers. In September of 1921, four bodies were inspected to confirm that the soldiers chosen had died from combat wounds in battle. After the bodies were inspected, the bodies were shipped in caskets to be brought before U.S. Sergeant Edward F. Younger, a highly decorated U.S. infantryman who was given the duty of selecting the body that would be placed in the tomb. Sergeant Younger made his decision by placing several roses on top of one of the caskets. The body of the unknown soldier was then placed in a sealed coffin and shipped to the United States on board the USS Olympia. The other three unidentified bodies were then buried in a cemetery near Paris, France. On November 9th of 1921, the body of the unknown soldier was brought to Washington, D.C., where it rested in the U.S. Capitol Rotunda. In a single day, 90,000 U.S. citizens paid their respects to the unknown soldier. Two days later, the body of the unknown service member was brought from the U.S. Capitol to the Arlington National Cemetery, where a state funeral ceremony was held for the unknown soldier. A field artillery battery from the U.S. Capitol Mall fired a salvo every minute during the procession. They only halted firing during the two minutes of silence that took place at the beginning of the ceremony. U.S. President Warren G. Harding then placed a Medal of Honor on the coffin, while Lord Beatty awarded the unknown soldier with the Victoria Cross on behalf of King George V and the United Kingdom. Other Allied powers additionally awarded the unknown American soldier with decorations and high honors as well. On July 3rd of 1926, the United States Congress authorized the completion of the tomb in which a superstructure would be placed on top of the tomb. A competition was held to design such a structure. This contest was won by sculptor Thomas Hudson Jones and architect Lorimer Rich, both of whom were granted the contract to complete the monument. 
The monument was designed in the shape of a sarcophagus and was made from Yule marble. The monument additionally stood at an impressive height of 11 feet, with the tomb weighing a total of 160,000 pounds. Both panels of the monument had a grand total of six inverted reefs on them, divided by Doric pilasters. The reefs were originally made to represent the world of memories, however they later came to represent six of the largest campaigns in World War I. The panel facing the city of Washington had three figures on it which represent peace, victory, and valor. These figures also symbolized the three allied powers in World War I, those being the United States, the United Kingdom, and France. The opposite panel, which faced the Memorial Amphitheater, had an inscription carved into it which read, Here rests in honored glory an American soldier known but to God. In December of 1931, the superstructure was placed onto the existing tomb, marking the completion of the historic monument. Since 1925, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier has been kept under watch by the U.S. military. In 1926, the monument was put under permanent 24-hour watch by the U.S. Army. Later on in 1946, the duty of guarding the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier was permanently given to the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment, which was known as the Old Guard. This regiment was one of the oldest units of the U.S. Army and was responsible for performing all ceremonial duties in the U.S. Capitol. The responsibility of guarding the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is considered to be one of the most honorable duties performed by the Old Guard. In order to become a sentinel for the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, an individual must have an impeccable military record and pass difficult tests to perform the high honor of guarding the memorial. The duty of a sentinel is incredibly difficult, as it requires nothing less than perfection. Any sentinel who serves for more than nine months is permanently awarded with the Sentinel Badge, an insignia that reads, Honor Guard. In addition to wearing this distinct badge, sentinels are known for wearing blue dress uniforms and sunglasses. In performing their guard duties, sentinels are required to have their weapon on their shoulder closest to watching visitors in order to protect the tomb. While guarding the tomb, the sentinel must march back and forth on a 63-foot mat placed on a plateau near the memorial. This path must be crossed in exactly 21 steps, after which the sentinel must take a 21-second pause, then turn around and take another 21-second pause, before walking back in exactly 21 steps. The number of 21 refers to the 21-gun salute, which is the highest salute used in U.S. military ceremonies. If an onlooker violates the restricted area, then the sentinel will bring his rifle to the front as a warning. If this warning sign fails, then the sentinel will verbally call out a warning to the violating onlooker. During the daytime, guards change every half an hour. In the night hours, guards change every two hours. Finally, guards change every hour during the daylight hours in wintertime. In the ceremony of changing guards, an officer of the guard inspects the uniform and weapons of the on-duty guard. On August 3rd of 1956, U.S. President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed a bill to honor the unidentified soldiers killed in World War II and the Korean War. Two unknown soldiers from World War II were placed in identical caskets and taken aboard the USS Canberra, being placed on either side of the unknown soldier from the Korean War. The unknown soldier from World War II was chosen by the US Medal of Honor recipient, William R. Charette, while the unknown soldier from the Korean War was chosen by the US Army Master Sergeant, Ned Lyle. The casket with the other World War II unknown soldier received a burial at sea. On May 28th of 1958, the caskets of the World War II and Korean War unknown soldiers arrived in the Capitol Rotunda. On May 30th, both caskets were brought to the Arlington National Cemetery. U.S. President Dwight D. Eisenhower then awarded both unknown soldiers with the Medal of Honor before their bodies were interred in the crypts on the plateau west of the tomb. The last unknown soldier to be interred at the site was a soldier who had died in action during the Vietnam War. 
This unknown soldier was awarded the Medal of Honor by U.S. President Ronald Reagan, who presided over the funeral as the Commander-in-Chief. The body of this unknown soldier was laid in a new crypt and placed between the two soldiers from World War II and the Korean War. Ten years later, newly discovered research determined the probable identity of the unknown soldier from the Vietnam War. A 1998 DNA test positively identified the unidentified soldier to be Lt. Michael J. Blassie. After the family of Blassie wished for him to be buried in his hometown, his body was exhumed and the crypt was left empty. Today, the crypt represents the memory of all American service members whose bodies were never found. Overall, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is the most iconic monument at the Arlington National Cemetery, honoring unidentified U.S. service members who made the ultimate sacrifice while serving their country. When visiting the grounds, it is very important to respect and abide by the set rules and guidelines. Thank you for checking out our video! If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more additional content. If you have any ideas for a future video topic, please leave a comment and let me know what you would like to see me cover next. I'm really hoping to grow this channel and provide you all with more content in the future, and your support means the world to me. Thanks everyone!